Today is just a quick video to talk about two things that Cadex have done this week with regards to the overheating on the Goggles X. First of all, Cadex have officially announced this new replacement heatsink, and we'll talk about that a bit more later on in the video, but they have also released an updated firmware that they say reduces the power consumption of the goggles, and that should help with overheating. Now, I've been doing some testing with this new firmware, and whilst I can't see any dramatic change on the thermal camera, there are changes with regards to the power consumption of the goggles and what I'm going to do next is just walk you through my findings on the original firmware compared to this new firmware then we'll talk a bit more about the heatsink situation and then hopefully that will give you an idea of what options there are available to you today if you are having these overheating issues on the goggles. Now, if you haven't seen, I do have a video covering the thermal issues that people have been having on these goggles. I've torn them down, showing you all of the things that I found under a thermal camera. And if you're interested in seeing that, there will be a link to that original video in the description. This really is a follow on from that one. Okay, now we did the testing for this in different modes. We tested it on the Avatar splash screen. This is with the goggles powered on, just sitting there with no VTX connected in the main Avatar mode. We then tested it in the Avatar system with the VTX connected. That was with low power mode turned off at maximum RF output. We tested it in analog with just the snow input, no analog module connected. HDMI with a black screen, as well as HDMI with an input via a PC, which was sitting on a desktop image. Now, just walking you through the different power consumption numbers, you can see on the original firmware, version 36.42.4, this was the last official release by Cadex. On the Avatar splash screen, it was drawing 645 milliamp. On the Avatar VTX with it connected, it was 665. And what you can see is that there's a drop in power consumption with the new firmware, which is version 37.42.4. Two, and that has dropped it from 645 to 555 on the splash screen and from 665 to 590 with the VTX. You'll notice on analog mode, there was no changes. It does show a little bit different. In fact, it's showing a little bit more power usage on the new firmware, but that's within error, should be ignored, and I'm not seeing any changes basically in the analog mode. With regards to the HDMI inputs, we're seeing it drop from 520 milliamp down to 470 on the black screen and from 553 down to 511 with a desktop image. If we take a look at that in watts, you can see it consumes about 10 watts of power on the old firmware on the Avatar splash screen, but that drops to 8 watts of power or nearly 9 8.8 .8, with a saving of 1.4 watts with a vtx connected it drops from 10.64 to 9.44 again a smaller reduction in power consumption however is still over a watt on analog as i've said it shows a little bit of a negative but this is within error and it should be ignored but i did just want to show you the data that i captured then on hdmi black screen literally just under a watt of saving and again just over half for what a saving with the PC display input. If we take a look at this as a percentage improvement, you can see they've been able to improve its consumption by nearly 14% on the Avatar splash screen and just over 11% on the Avatar with the VTX or 11 and a quarter. As I've said, we'll ignore analog and on HDMI, we've got 9.62% improvement on the HDMI black screen and then 7.59% improvement on the HDMI input with an image. Now, this reduction in power consumption is directly going to correlate into a reduction in heat that the goggles are producing. However, it is fairly minor overall, as I've shown at best about 14%. Whilst I can't see the effect of this really on the thermal camera, what I can say is people are reporting good results with this new firmware. They're already saying that they're finding their OLED displays a little bit lower, especially on that right hand side. And whilst this may not be a complete fix for everybody, it may solve the problem for a number of people and it should help stop the goggles get to that threshold of around 60 degrees on that LED one display that tends to cause the issues. Cadex have also now officially announced this new heatsink that is going to be available for the goggles on their social media platforms. They've put a post up saying to people if you're having problems you can reach out and they will arrange to send you the new part. This replaces the original heat shield that was mounted to the top of the main RF 
board, but it doesn't actually require a new top cover because it fits in the gap that is already there. What they're doing is basically increasing the surface area of that heat shield that goes on the top, and this again should help improve the overall thermal performance of the goggles, but it is too early today to say if this alone is going to solve the issues for everyone. As I showed in my last video, there isn't really one issue at play here, it is a combination of things, but what Cardax are doing is providing a combination of solutions and add that heatsink to this new firmware, hopefully that should solve the problem for most people, but we're going to have to wait until the temperatures really do get up in the summer to see how things do pan out overall. Here and now, it is great to see Cadex are taking this matter seriously, they are working to improve it, and who knows, we may even see more performance improvements with regards to temperature in firmware in the future. There's certainly areas that I've stated that I think they could improve things, and they may be even able to do something with new production of goggles going out without many modifications, but just things like some extra thermal paste in some places as well. I'm going to be monitoring this closely and as I've said here and now this is pretty much all we know We're just gonna have to monitor how people are finding this with the issues that they're having and we'll see how it pans out as time goes on now, I really hope you found this video interesting. If you haven't seen my original video on this subject, I will put a link to that in the description where we do a teardown and take a look at the thermals on the Goggles X in great detail. If you're interested in seeing that, please do consider checking it out. Finally, I just want to say, if you like to see content like this in the future, please also consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of the Patreons of this channel. I would not be able to keep making content without your support. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, Future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.